Hi, welcome to another episode of Toronto TV Cares. Um, this week I'm going to introduce you to something that combines my two passions, salsa dancing and charity work. And what do you get when you combine the two is Salsa for Charity. And today I'm with founder of Salsa for Charity, uh, Davin Lee. Hi. Welcome, Davin. Thank you. So, um, this Salsa for Charity, can you tell us, I know what what I know is that it's the first professional salsa dance school and you guys are committed to basically contributing to our community. Yes. Yes. And when was the birth of Salsa for Charity? It was about five years ago, really. It started off just quite small, just giving weekly classes, but since then it's grown and the idea has expanded just across the greater Toronto area. We've got several sites now mm -hmm. where people can learn to dance and give kids a chance. And same time, have fun, exercise, learn the passion for salsa, meet new friends, sometimes meet their wives and husbands or girlfriends and boyfriends, which, interesting enough, in our conversation earlier, yes. we actually have common friends, and uh, your friend started dating my other student, because they're yes. both my students in the same class, so it's a beautiful thing. It's funny how that all comes together. Maybe they should be on the show tonight. Well, but, uh, their names will remain anonymous. Yes, anonymous. Uh, <laughs> hurt us if they knew yeah, we talking I about I just them. found out about it too, and I was amazed and surprised and very pleased. Yeah, it's a good so, thing. So, way to go. It brings people together. It does, it does. Oh. And the idea is to combine that with also giving back to the community, mm -hmm. which is why it's so special. And the idea with, with dancing, it's such a joyful thing. It's really one of the few things, or one of the many, one of the few things, I think, that gives pure joy, and it's, it's a healthy type of joy. It's one that combines, again, the exercise with the, with the love for the music and, again, the interaction and teamwork that you have between the, the man and the woman because you're dancing really as a team. It's not that whole man dominates and a woman must follow. I was yeah. just telling my, my class, my students tonight down in Toronto, down at the Eaton Center, that it's, it's really a team. It's a partnership. So the man proposes a move and the, the woman chooses to follow or not. And things usually work out better when you have a cooperation. That's, that's very beautifully put. I, I like that. I've never seen it like that before, but that's very nice. So what mm -hmm. is the correlation between salsa dancing and charity? Okay. Like, where, where do you see that connect? Where do I see it connect, Carol? Hmm. Like, how are you, why would you propose salsa dancing yeah. with giving back to the community? Like, well, how did you decide okay. on doing that? Well, it's just two things that I did well. So I wanted to marry the two. When I was thinking about just the birth of Salsa for Charity, it really happened when I was looking for some way I could give back to the community. I, 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 I volunteered a lot before, and at, at that time, about five years ago, I was, I was looking for another way where I can give back continually. We all work long days, and I have a day job too, and you have a day job. We all have these, these parts of our lives that are probably very traditional, in that you know, 9 to 5, we, we probably tend to focus a lot of our work. I know within our, our peers nowadays that we tend to focus on our careers, mm -hmm. and as such, we tend to forget about you know, the, have that perspective in life that it is important to give back at the same time. And I, especially amongst people I know, just my peer group, I think oftentimes we focus so much on careers and we focus so much on perhaps building our families, which are all good things, but we tend to forget that I think our family should grow and be expanded much greater than just our immediate family mm -hmm. and our, our, our friends, say, our close circle of friends. It, it's more than that. In fact, there's an old saying that I like to think about, and it's more often now than ever before, it's that the strangers are just family we've never met. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. Yeah, if you, if you take that and extrapolate, then it is important to take care of your family that's just outside of your own circle, mm -hmm. which is something I was really, really reflecting on. How should I do that back? And I, I came up with this because I, I really love dancing. I dance, I dance very well. I, I'm very lucky and fortunate in that sense. And, I've done competitions and shows and won competitions and it's a big part of my life and it's it's one of the 
one of the, one of the best parts of my life. And I'm pretty lucky. I, I think we all are living in Canada. Canada's a great place. So all of our, our all parts of our life is pretty are pretty good. Yeah. But this is something more for me personally, where I can combine something I love it's, that's dancing, as well as teaching, mm -hmm. as well as with giving to the community. And, and through this, we've given now, and we want to focus on on helping needy kids in particular. So we've given over twenty two thousand dollars in cash. To the Covenant House to help get yes. kids off the street and help them live independent lives. Is it just the Covenant House that you donate to? Are there other charities that you could mm. donate to? Yes, we also donate to World Vision, Red Cross, the Canadian Cancer Society, mm -hmm. the Ontario Heart and Stroke Foundation, mm -hmm. and, and actually others too. The idea is that we want to spread the joy of salsa not just through our students but also to our community. Mm -hmm. So we also support anyone who's running fundraisers who also have that same mindset so they're looking to raise money through uh, for a charity for a good cause by let's say running fundraising parties or or special events for instance tomorrow we spawn salsa for charity spons has sponsored a valentine's day special which is yes. great tell us about that uh, it's essentially a bachelor and bachelorette auction that's happening it's been run by a couple of great ladies uh, their names, I think, are Susu and Cece, uh, Nam and, and Cece, and forgive me if you're watching and I'm not getting that right, <laughs> but really the idea is to bring people together who care about the community, who want to come out and have a good time, meet wonderful new people, and also raise money for the Heart and Stroke Foundation all at once. That's great. So I, I'm a real supporter of that. I, in terms of donating classes and donating performances, that's something I want to help out too because we're all working towards the same goal. That is to help the family mm -hmm. who outside of her own intimate circle. That, that only breeds good. So how are you helping out with the event tomorrow? You're sponsoring. So does that mean you've given some of your students an opportunity to be auctioned off? Are you going oh, to be auctioned off? Oh, we've donated off? dance classes. I'm going to oh, be there. I can oh, so do a mini performance for prizes. Okay. Things we've done in the past, we've donated our performances to mm -hmm. the United Way of Greater Toronto. We've donated our performances to help help kids in, in who've been hurt by the disaster in Chernobyl. There was an event we supported that was that held back in May, and that was the that's been a while back now, but it was a dance-a-thon, so it was perfect. It was wow. essentially people were dancing for as long as they could to raise money for charity, and we were there as well to give a performance and teach people salsa mm -hmm. and to donate our prizes, and that was all for all for free because we believe in what they believe in mm -hmm. and what they're doing mm -hmm. and because of that we want to help. So do you strictly teach salsa or is there like other types of dancing that we are not aware of or that are similar? Yeah, most people when they hear about Latin dancing they usually think salsa because mm -hmm. worldwide that's the most well known. But really salsa is kind of the main umbrella and underneath that you've got the really important dances too such as merengue bachata and also some also cha-cha-cha mm -hmm. but the big dances we focus on are, are definitely salsa bachata and merengue and also some cha-cha too and you find if you know those dances you go anywhere around the world you'll be able to speak the same language as in you'll be able to dance go out meet new people no matter where you are for instance I just came back from a work project in, in France in Paris when I was there my hotel just happened to be it, five blocks, about a ten minute walk away from two of the hottest clubs in Paris, and goodness knows, even my employer doesn't know, but that's okay. <laughs> I did go out at night, I did check out the scene, and, and I, I do speak some French, but even if I did not speak French, it wouldn't really matter, because you can speak the same language, dance. It yes. sounds quite cheesy, but it's true. I find, dance. I find though that with salsa dancing, it's like I've gone to normal hip hop clubs or like lounges, but when I go to a salsa club, it's all about the dance. No one's really there to go pick up anybody or to like, you know, try to hit on you. It's all maybe. About, well, of course, maybe I'm being. <laughs> maybe yes, it's you. true. It's all relative. No, it's all relative. <laughs> But Some people I, do, but most people don't. You're right. They yeah. really love the dancing itself. I, and so I, will, that. I will dance with anybody at a salsa club because it's all about the dance, pretty much. I will dance with like someone I wouldn't usually dance with at a hip hop club because yeah. I know it's just about the dance, and it's it's a great it's a great way of meeting people or just to like have fun. I find. 
and I, I've been to your classes before, I've witnessed your classes, and they're very much fun. And I find that they're like more intimate and small, so you get more um, student and teacher interaction. Yes, and you can focus. focus on. Yeah. So is that what makes your one of your school one of the more unique schools? Like what makes well, it stand think, out? Yeah, I think you pointed out something that's really good in terms of the interaction there. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's important is that the people who come to our classes they, they also know about what we do. So mm -hmm. it's it just feels good because yeah. they know that they're also helping out. Right. And we can't we couldn't have done what we've done, raised so much money and helped out so many charities without continuous support from our students and them telling their friends about it and bringing their friends in and so on and so forth. It's, it's all a multiplier effect, it, like a pebble in a pond, it all spreads out, mm -hmm. ripples, ripples outwards. And luckily we've had rippling more ripples outwards and we want to grow that. Now, to what you were saying before about just the, the what makes it unique, we also, so that we have the community part of it, it's just mm -hmm. giving back, mm -hmm. heartwarming. But it's also the interactive method of teaching that we have. We really want to get people involved. It's making sure that people, and you got to come to a class to see what it's like. It's, it's not your typical class where you just have your teacher talking and you have your students nodding. The idea is to get everyone involved. So I'll be asking questions and, and challenging the students to, to repeat what I've said or to show me some steps. Just keeping people on their toes because what happens when you keep people on their toes or keep people laughing, people learn more. Mm -hmm. And that, in the end, is the most important thing. And Well, that's important as well as just enjoying the moments and, of course, meeting the friends there and then learning how to dance. So when you, couple, when you take all those things and marry them all together, you have a, a really an enjoyable experience. Mm -hmm. And a great way to spend a, a weeknight or a weekend, especially when most of us probably sit during the day in our office jobs, yes. in our chairs like this, yes. in front of our computers, yes. and that's, you know, our bodies are made to move, and yeah. it's, it's nice that, it's, it's not nice, it's, it's essential to have this kind of outlet. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll find that's the case when you see people really into the dancing, mm -hmm. you go to their closet, you open the doors up, and you see it's split in two. You have your non-salsa clothes and your salsa clothes. Yeah. It's funny. Non-salsa, you have your suits and so forth, or dresses for the, or, or blouses for the girls and suit pants. And then on your salsa clothing side, you have, ooh, the risque stuff. Like, <laughs> Get the little tank tops. So well, when you dance. Sexy, sultry stuff. When you dance, Very nice. Especially with salsa, I mean, you really get to express yourself through your body. Yes. And I mean, the music just like you cannot just stand there and be a wallflower when you go to salsa club. The music makes you move. It's like the beat, the the environment, and everything just makes you want to move. So that's yeah, a really thing. Sort of shaking. And, and I it's know, a good thing. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> thing. It's important. And I know also with your classes, not only do you keep it within the class, but you also take it outside. You guys have like a weekly. Um, you take it into an actual club where you get to practice with each other, don't you? Exactly. Yeah. So we have. Regular outings where we take all the students out, whoever can make time to go, mm -hmm. and I hope that's more and more of them, and a lot of people do come out. That way you meet people from the other classes, and you also dance in the club, which is where the rubber hits the road. Yes. When you're there with the music going, and especially for some of the guys, it's a hard thing. In our community, in our culture, the Canadian culture that is, and it's dancing's not part of it. Mm -hmm. Dancing's not part of just our overall way of being. We do hockey, we do sports, and for the ladies, yes, you do more dancing. That's where you have heads and shoulders above us guys. But we go there, but the guys can be daunting. But with that time and practice, yes. and just letting go of the idea that you're being watched all the time, which you definitely not, because everyone else is feeling the same way. As a female, I totally recommend for guys to learn how to salsa dance because it's very impressive, and I would much rather go out with a guy who can dance salsa dance that can lead me than with a guy that plays hockey like you said <laughs> like definitely and hockey's great too but i mean like you know it, it's a connection that you make with yeah. a person when you salsa dance that you wouldn't necessarily make watching sitting there watching tv with them yeah i and, couldn't agree with you more um you do have a website can you tell yes. us what that is it's triple w salsa for charity.com and if you're looking for it on google you can find it through just type in Salsa for Charity in case you forget. But really, it just goes over what we do. There's a great 
And one, one program that I'm in particular proud of is that we started Canada's first Salsa for Street Kids yes. program. So if any of you have seen the movie Take the Lead or Mad Hot Ballroom, if you're really into dancing, then I was, I was inspired by watching those movies. So I want to do the same in Canada, starting with Toronto. So what do they so, do? Exactly. So essentially, we, we, we go into the Covenant House, which again is a fantastic youth shelter at Young and Girard. They help thousands of kids a year through schooling, through health care, through counseling, and essentially they teach them, there's an old saying where you teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. They yes. do exactly that. They help them finish the high school diplomas. So the residents there, which usually they come off the streets, they, they, not usually, they always come off the street. Right. Sometimes they come from the sex trade, sometimes they come from uh, drug abuse, a history of drug abuse, mm -hmm. and you see a complete change when you're there. Uh, just this last week, I was teaching some kids there, and, and again, we donate our classes there because we want to be sure that they also benefit from the life-enhancing benefits of salsa, which is true. You learn self-esteem, you learn cooperation, you learn trust. That's something that's not particularly big in their history because mm -hmm. they're not we're, they're not as lucky as we are in terms of, I have, I have great parents who've taken care of me, who, who, who instilled in me a lot of the values that I really believe in, that is trust and believing yourself and working hard and mm -hmm. reaping the rewards. Mm -hmm. That's not the same for everyone. And, but one thing that I noticed most about when I was just after teaching the residents there at the Covenant House is that they're more like us than most people believe. They, people at the end of that class, I was teaching as one student, and one resident there, and she has a history of drug abuse. She's a very frail, short hair. Not, if I were to say anything, she looks. If you were to imagine someone who's done drugs before, you might you might want to picture. You almost think something like her. That's who I'd picture because she looks that part, just right. more frail and, and, and pale. But she almost transformed a bit just over over the class, and she she at first was really hesitant, mm -hmm. but. If, with the right coaching and just making sure that she knows that we're all here to support her and that she's just here to learn to dance and to make that part of her life, we start enjoying it. And just the laughter comes out with this interactive teaching. That's great. You're definitely yeah. doing something great for the community and we do thank you for doing that. So if our uh, you. viewers wanted to take one of your classes, do you offer it throughout the week? We do, every day of the week now. And so at different offer? locations, we have, we have classes in Scarborough, mm -hmm. which is where we are. Yes. <laughs> We're in Scarborough. We have classes in, in Markham now, Mississauga. Mm -hmm. We have classes in downtown Toronto and in North York. And we're looking at expanding more. So the idea is the best thing to do is go to the website. And perfect. We have the table right here. Yes. We have all the locations. The schedule where you can check out yeah. the, um, the days and when they're available and exactly. if it's full or, you know. Um, we have classes starting every few weeks, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if a class has already started. If you start within those couple of weeks, you get makeup classes. Right. So the idea is that like, any time is a good time to be involved. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are tests too. <laughs> are there? Yeah, I'm seeing that because it's funny. I was just telling my students today, just they're in my level one class, and saying, "You will be tested on this. You know that, right?" And it's funny to see just their eyes widen yeah. because. It, it seems surprising given it's a dance class, yeah. but hey, it's the best way to learn. Yes, you women, you have to learn your own steps without the man leading you. See, and I it isn't cheat. so easy no. <laughs> without the guy there. You have it's to do it on your own. Yeah, I, it, but you I, learn it better. The pressure is on the guys, I must say, because yes, with it's me, true. I learned the basic. I've learned the basic steps, and that's pretty much it. And usually, when a guy can lead me, I can dance with them. But yes. ask me to dance like without a guy. Oh, forget it. I don't know. <laughs> that's okay. That's why they're tests. Move your hips. You just gotta move your hips, so ladies. Make it, team, make it. Exactly. Maybe sometimes it works. <laughs> but with this testing and just with the coaching and ongoing practices and classes and going out, you'll be surprised how much you can learn. And. Mm -hmm. It is a medium-term thing. It's a lifelong thing. I've been dancing for so many years now, and my parents dance as well. They're into dancing, so they got the got the thing into me. Wow. They, I suppose, infected me with it, but it's a good infection. Yes. It, it just it goes beyond words sometimes. It's a simple thing. I mean, if you're looking at aliens looking down at us folks just dancing salsa or anything, you know, there's people going back and forth in a 
on a floor. <laughs> it's just so, it looks so simple. But it's the feeling that you just get imbued with that takes you away. It's, it literally feels like you're like flying. Mm -hmm. And they say, and I read this, so maybe it's, maybe it's true. I think it's true. That's the only form of activity that can ward off the onset of Alzheimer's. Wow. The only physical activity because not only do you combine the physical workout, right. but you also combine the mental and musical and spiritual workout. I can feel it. Because you feel it and yes. you move. Yes. And you're interacting with someone else. Yes. And to wrap, not to wrap up, you, meet, you might meet your husband or wife or girlfriend <laughs> or boyfriend like my students did. Yes. I went to my other student's wedding just, just wow. last year and hey, it's great how often that happens. It's I'm, almost like... I should charge them more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. That's, it's it's almost, all part of the package. It's almost like you learned this connection that you didn't realize you could have. You know, when you dance salsa, I, yeah. that's how I feel. Like, I didn't think I could have some type, that type of connection with a stranger. But you yes. can when you salsa dance, because you're right, it's more than just the body. It's a mental connection, it's emotional, it's everything. Mm -hmm. So what's your motto? I know you have a motto for the salsa for charity. Well, we've got a couple, actually. I, I, th I think they really do encapsulate what we do. Mm -hmm. The first one is that you learn to dance, and you give kids the chance. Mm -hmm. Salsa for charity. So that says it all in that when you're learning to dance, you also give back to the community, you help needy kids. That's yeah. a good thing. And another thing is that, or another saying is that you dance with heart and you do your part. It's also for charity. So I think that says it too. It, you get the warm, and fuzz, warm, fuzzy feeling to and know that you you're get, contributing and learning and meeting people at the same time. You get a sense of like how people enjoy, just by the yeah. pictures on your site alone. I mean, it's it's not like. It's, we're not pretending. I mean, it's something that you can really like. I didn't pay them. It's amazing. They did it by themselves. I, I couldn't believe it. I know. Can I give you something for that? No. <laughs> so wow. We have to sign off soon, but just before we do, can you give us the website once more? Thank you. It's triple w salsa for charity dot com. So the idea is that just go to the website. You can register online. Everything is pretty much there in terms of the schedule, the frequently asked questions. Feel free to use a telephone number there. It's 416-999-2495. And give us a call if you have any questions. We're there to help. And our goal at the end is to help. It's a, joy, it's a joy and a privilege to help you become the best Latin dancers in the universe. Maybe a tall order to fill, but one that we're committed to. And uh, I'm ready to meet you all, so please come to our website, salsaforcharity.com. Thank you very much, Davin. So thank you. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next week.